At some stage in life, every one of us will face a job interview. But for each successful applicant, 10 others will blow it. But business psychologist Dr. Rob Young believes he can help. He's interviewed thousands of people and claims that he can transform anyone into a pedigree performer. You cannot say that in an interview. Today, he will be scrutinizing three real candidates who are all competing for one real job. Which one will prove so dismal that they qualify for Rob's no-nonsense training? This is the biggest challenge so far. She has to get the gentleman to remove his trousers. Come on! Next Topshop are one of the biggest names on the high street, and for the thousands trying to claw their way into the fashion world, it's the place to work. Today, they're looking to recruit a buyer's admin assistant. Despite a salary of just £16,000, the competition is intense. I'd probably get around 250 CVs for every position I advertise. This is the first rung on the ladder to becoming a fashion buyer, the people who decide which clothes make it into store. They may be starting at the bottom, but Topshop's expectations are sky high. And what about this hem? They need to have a proven fashion eye. They need to have absolute confidence. They need to be motivated and they need to be driven. It's interview day at Topshop's headquarters in London. And while our two interviewers will be aiming to find the cream of the crop, Rob's hidden away on the lookout for the worst candidate for him to work with. Although the setting looks quite informal, make no mistake, this is business. Time for the first candidate. When you go for an interview, it's much safer if you're being interviewed behind the desk, because then you can hide the bottom half of your body. But on a sofa like this, it's a lot harder to, to hide, so be really aware of how you're sitting, what you're doing with your body and your hands. If you could start by telling us a bit about your degree. I chose the Winchester course really specifically because it was a very fashion-based course. It was competitive, but not so high pressure, I think, yeah. in the fashion industry. She's scratching, she's touching her lips, touching her hair, touching her nose, all signs of, of nervousness. Calm down. I just want to go in there and, and sort of tape her, her hands down. So what sort of qualities do you think we look for when we're recruiting for buyers um, admin assistants? I think you'd look for an organised person, somebody who's quite punctual, aware of, you know, time. Um, just basically, generally, quite up together with everything. She's answering the questions very well, but she is coming across as really nervous. Finger ringing, touching of her face, body hunched forwards. I feel sorry for this girl. Now, from number two. Yeah. Don't shoot the messenger, you know, I don't know a thing about fashion, but she looks bloody awful to me. <laughs> But, you know, maybe they love it. It's fashion. What qualities do you think we're looking for? The role would require someone who was very, very organised, um, self-motivated. Just first impressions about how she's coming across body language-wise. Quite closed, not terribly warm, very intense face at the moment, so she needs to warm up soon when she starts talking. The Top Shop's won various awards and it gets great write-ups in the press. How do you think it's achieved that status? From getting the trends from the catwalk into, onto the shop floor very quickly. And also the, um, the TS range and the, and the boutique and working with, the, with designers, sponsoring Graduate Fashion Weeks. She seems to be talking sense. She seems to know her fashion style. And that in itself is impressing the interviewers. The final candidate must now face the music. OK, so how are you feeling? You OK? Yeah, slightly Good. nervous, but OK. okay. Ah, <laughs> well, try to relax. Admitting that you're nervous isn't probably the best idea because it creates an image in their mind. So they, they pay attention more to your nervousness, so don't do it. Have you got any favourite fashion designers? Um, um, Again, starting a sentence off with a, a long breath and an um. Um, can't think of one offhand. The fact that she's saying, I can't think of one offhand, is an illustration of the fact that she hasn't done her research, she's not prepared, and that's a key foundation to good interview practice. If you don't know what you're talking about, then you can't project your personality. I, I think... Um, I'm sure the candidate would be mortified if we played a tape back to her and counted the number of ums. I'm up to about 112 at the moment. It's decision time. Which of the three candidates has made the grade? Despite a shaky start, candidate number two's grasp of the fashion business has landed her the job. 
but one candidate stood out for all the wrong reasons. 21-year-old Michelle Donnelly. I think they think I am determined and I really want the job. And I think that came across in the interview. Because of the confidence wasn't as great as we might expect, it came across a bit as though she didn't really have the enthusiasm that you require for this job. Michelle's interview was abysmal, but Rob thinks that in just three days he can turn this shrinking violet into a bona fide fashionista. But only if she's ready to face some hard facts. So how do you feel that you didn't get the job? Um, I'm very disappointed. Why don't we have a look at the video and see what the interviewers said about okay. you after the interview and we'll go from there. OK, then. Thank you. Throughout the interview, Michelle's voice was, could come across quite monotone. It becomes nice, cool, calm, collected. We need her to be, probably pick up and change her pace and her voice to have a real effect and to show her, her enthusiasm and passion. It is a really fast-paced environment. It's high pressure. And from what we've seen today, she doesn't necessarily strike me as someone that would, that would work well in that kind of environment. OK, so listening to those people, slagging off, saying that, you know, you, you've got no life experience, you've got a monotone voice, lack of confidence, that you're not passionate. How does that make you feel? In terms of my voice being monotone, I don't know if that's me normally or whether that was just in the interview. I'm hoping it's just in the interview and that I haven't got a normally boring voice. Um, definitely self-confidence. I could improve on, I know that. There is a positive there because they yeah. said that if you could show your energy and your dynamism, if you could build your confidence, work on the goal setting, if you can do all of these things, then there is potential there. Michelle still lives at home with her mum and dad in Sidcup, Kent. It's a world far removed from the dog-eat-dog -dog world of fashion. On paper, this fashion graduate is well qualified, but in reality, she is a million miles from securing the job of her dreams. When you're at university, people tell you how competitive the industry is. But you don't really listen too much. You just think, oh, it'll be OK, because I'll have a degree in it, so it'll be fine. But when you're out there trying to find the jobs, you just don't realise it is so competitive. You do start to lose hope after a while, and you think, am I ever going to get that job? <laughs> if Rob has his way, in just three days' time, she'll stand a fighting chance of breaking into fashion. But it's going to be tough. It will push her to the very limit. Will she come out the other side a go-getting candidate, or will it all prove too much for Mousy Michelle? Little lost girl in the big bad world. It's day one of Michelle's training, and Rob has organised a day out in the country. But this is to be no pleasant little field trip. What you're going to be doing is climbing up this baby. <laughs> Rob's golden rule for interviews is be prepared. So Michelle must rehearse her answers to the standard questions. Then they should become second nature, even under pressure, or even at the top of a 30-foot pole. OK. Let's see how it goes. OK, so what would you say are your three greatest strengths? Well, one of them would definitely be my passion for fashion because um, not only does it um, consume a lot of my personal life, it's also my objective in life. In you don't sound career. passionate about it. In what way? <clears throat> well, it just sounds like a, a part-time hobby to you, the way you say it. You say that you have a, a passion for fashion, but I don't see the kind of the burning desire oozing from your every orifice. But it's just something about your voice. It just gives away the fact that you just don't sound terribly interested about it at the end of the day. Take another step. <laughs> what would you say are your three greatest weaknesses? Um, perfectionism would be one of them. How is that a weakness? How does it undermine your performance or that of the team? just means that maybe I don't work as quickly as other people. OK, so you're saying that you're a bit slower than other people. That is a major flaw, you're right. What other weaknesses do you have? Um. Quickly, please. Um, I can't think of anything. 
you can't think of anymore. How do you think that would go down with an interviewer? Not very well. What will they think of you? That I'm incompetent. Take another step. <laughs> well done. A lot of the time you're not thinking quickly enough because you need to really invest time in thinking about what the right thing to say for the right question is. Using your voice, you're still coming across quite monotone and you're using the dreaded um, just climbing up the pole, I think you said, um, about 20 or 30 times. So let's go back down to earth and we'll work on those. OK? Thank you. Rob believes that an interview is like a performance. Unless Michelle can overcome her obvious shyness and learn to hold centre stage, she's never going to make it. So he's booked her a slot as an entertainer at a mother and toddler group. I wouldn't mind just the children, but with their mums all looking at me as well. I think I'll probably want to, want to run and hide. <laughs> right. and you're shake she has just 15 minutes to run through the order of class before her audience arrives. And we're going to clap our hands like this and see if you can actually get them to all clap. And then you're going to go, Elo, gelo, come out and play. Elo, gelo, come out and play. Elo, gelo, come out and play. Come out and play today. OK, should we just practice it one time? I'll sing it with you. Okay. Yeah? Okay. You, you won't stop at any point. No, I promise. Right? I okay. promise I'll sing it all the way through with you. So you have to say to everyone, right then, we're going to see if we can clap our hands. OK, okay. and a one, two, three, four. Hello, hello, come out and play. Hello, hello, come out and play. can't hear you. Hello, hello, come out and play. Come out and play today. Yay, that's it. <laughs> you welling up? Fine. Don't cry. You okay? <laughs> you nervous? You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I honestly. Promise I won't stop singing. I promise. Okay. Come here. Come here. <laughs> the only reason it, it's not going to go well is if you don't act confident. If yeah. you are acting confident, smiling, and happy, then they're going to love you. <coughs> Yeah. When you smile, you have the loveliest smile in the world. Rob's going to stand back and watch from the sidelines, but with this small earpiece, he'll still be able to hear Michelle's muted tones over the cacophony of kids. And she's not saying a lot, she's got a ball in her hand, but she's not engaging any of the kids. She stood looking a little bit lost. A little lost girl in the big bad world. To be much more over the top, because don't forget these are kids. Yeah. They, they're not going to be thinking, oh, how OTT is she? Here we go. Keep getting in there, play with the kids, focus on them, okay? okay Get back in there, tiger. Okay. Armed with Rob's uh, wise okay. words, Michelle must now ready herself for her first public rendition okay. of the airlog song. Come on, everybody! We're going to get the airlog out to play, okay? Can you clap your hands? Now, everyone, clap their hands. This is a big test. She's the centre of attention. Can she hold it together? Are you ready, everybody? We're going to get the airlock out. Here it comes. At the start, there were tears, and I was so worried for her, the poor, fragile little petal. But now she's holding her own. Who would have expected it? The idea of it scared me so much, and actually doing it, just I think because I'd freaked myself out so much, actually doing it seemed a lot easier than I thought. I loved it. Yeah, I really did. But there's still a lot of work to do. Michelle may be starting to feel like a confident candidate, but with her boring voice, she certainly doesn't sound like one. Rob decides it's time to introduce her to the bright lights of Suho. So I'm going to ask you to compare a club night. You are going to be up there under the spotlight on your own. And you are going to have to emote, you're going to have to be enthusiastic and you're going to have to command the entire room. <laughs> Being up on the stage is, yeah, I don't normally do things like that, so definitely a bit frightening to think of. There's just time for a quick rehearsal. Monotone Michelle will have to learn fast or she'll bomb tonight. But first, Rob's going to show her how it's everyone, done. Everyone having a good time tonight? OK, my name's Rob. This is my first time tonight. I'm a stage virgin, I'm afraid. 
Um, but we're going to have a fantastic time tonight. We've got four acts for you. First one is Jonas and Plunkett. They've been together performing and, and writing for 18 months. So give it up. A huge round of applause for Jonas and Plunkett. Whoa, go for it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not him. OK. Uh, our first band tonight are Jonas and Plunkett. They've been writing and performing together for the past 18 months. So can we please give it up for Jonas and Plunkett? OK, but we want even more inflection. We want even more over the top in your voice. Weren't they absolutely amazing? OK, just watch that sentence. So you're saying, Wer weren't they absolutely amazing? Because your <laughs> voice went down. As if actually you were saying, I actually wanted to slip my wrists and die. <laughs> so it's got to be, weren't they absolutely amazing? As Michelle readies herself, the club starts to fill up. Can she really hold her nerve in front of 300 Soho sophisticates? Good luck, you're going to be fantastic. You're going to be fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Good the luck. Discovery We've got some really great bands on tonight. And our compare tonight, Michelle, has never compared before. Oh. And she was told half an hour ago that she's got to do it. So please, everyone, give her support. And I hand you over now to Michelle. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, it's my first night, so I am very nervous, so please be kind to me. You are all in for a spectacular evening. You're going to have a great time. We've got four amazing acts lined up. The first ones are Jonas and Plunkett. They've been writing and performing together for 18 months. So can you please give it up for Jonas and Plunkett? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Deep, I couldn't see breath. anyone, so I was fine. I just looked like straight ahead and then really like loud as well. So that's good. Close your eyes and cast your mind. <sighs> I feel really good. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. It's day two of Rob's interview training. She may have a degree in fashion, but unless Michelle Donnelly makes some dramatic changes, her hopes of working in the industry are remote. She's made good progress, but she's still lacking a key quality. Hold on, take a look at the view. Assertiveness. I'm going to ask you to cox a group of eight professional <laughs> rowers, because if you can influence them, if you can get them to bend to your will, then you can get the interviewers to give you a job. So what do you think? That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. You look a bit dazed. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I thought, so I actually have to be on the boat. You're going to be in the boat and I, telling I them what to do. Thingy. Yep. OK. OK, let's go meet them. OK. <laughs> First, she must undergo a vocal crash course from Cambridge Cox and Martin Haycock. To stand any chance of gaining the crew's respect, mild-mannered Michelle must very quickly become Michelle the Motivator. Now, long wind down. Having seen how it's done, Michelle must now take the helm. Focus on the quality of your voice. Really loud, deep breath, push the words out. Attention, go. Squeeze, squeeze, build now. Move there. No, it's fine, it's fine. Again. Move there. Well done. Lengthen. Ready? On this one. Now. Long. Get the timing. On Look. the crack. Long. Long. Wind down. Wind down. So the more you say legs down, it's quite aggressive, it's quite brutal, because that's what you're expecting them to do in the boat. The harder they make their legs go down, the more you encourage them to do that, the faster the boat's going to go. Attention, go, squeeze, squeeze, build now, move there, the move there, move there, no. legs, legs down. down. Now just catch your breath, catch your breath, catch your breath. Next bit coming up. Here we go. Big rhythm. Ready? In two, in one. It's one thing for Michelle to pull it off in the safe confines of the training room. Another out on the Thames, where she'll have to contend with a rising tide, as well as other roars. 
can she hold on love? How are you feeling, Michelle? Fine. It's not fine, it's fine, thank you. God damn it. Fine, thank you. Good. Michelle now faces the toughest test of her short coxing career. She must lead her eight-man crew through the first mile of the most famous rowing race in the world. We're just approaching the start line for the Oxford and Cambridge boat race. This is exactly what it's like. Imagine the helicopters buzzing overhead. You've got butterflies in your stomach, and it's your job to get the most out of the crew. Dead straight. Attention. Go. Squeeze. 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 Move there. Move there. Long. Long. Legs down. I think this has proved that I can actually lead. Um, I can get people to take notice of me and to do as they're told. She may have conquered the river, but Michelle is not yet ready to face the ultimate challenge. Tomorrow, Rob's planning to put her through a gruelling interview, designed to test her every weakness. To make it through, she's going to need one more weapon in her armoury. The power of persuasion. Rob's got just one evening left to prepare her. Fairly busy in here tonight. OK, you like the world of fashion, so here we've got two dummies. What we want you to do is to get them clothed and well, let's just say that you just have to borrow the clothes off the people in the pub. So, any ideas how you'll manage this? Um, probably just make it all funny. So, if I'm taking someone's trousers off, <laughs> they're going to have to find the funny side, I think. Should we do it? Yeah. Bar is your oyster. Enjoy. I was just wondering if you could offer a piece of clothing that I could put on him. It depends what you want. Is it, um, is it well, underwear you're after? Or no, or? it's actually some trousers. You're a pretty lady, right. you're a smooth talker, and uh, that's something you're doing well. But and I'm not going to get my kit out, you know, not after half a pint. OK, um, well, maybe if you've got another pint, <laughs> you'd consider it? Come on, lads, kit off for the last. Yeah, so if I have your jeans... <laughs> Brilliant job. Yeah, this is the easy bit. I've got to go and get some trousers. Michelle targets her next victim and within seconds has the shirt from his back. Yes! Thank you! A shirt was no problem, but now she's got to go below the belt. But I need to get him some trousers. <laughs> so, come on, one of you must be up for it. <laughs> Lads, all right out. Come on. You're tucked away in the corner. Come on. I don't think you're making much headway, really. Even though she hasn't managed to persuade them, she's persevering, trying and trying again. Just like in an interview situation, you can't give up, you can't say, I don't know, you have to persevere, come up with something. So you'd really be doing me a massive favour? Yes, I think she's managing it. Thank you. Result. Rob has seen enough. Amazingly, in just under 15 minutes, Michelle has successfully disrobed the pub clientele and completed our final task. For the first time, really your fun. enthusiasm really came through. You were dynamic, you were persuasive, your voice was geek, <laughs> it was appropriately funny. So think, if you manage to persuade people to give you the trousers off their very legs, how easy is it going to be to persuade a pair of interviewers to give you a job? It should be easy. It should be. Yeah. It's going to be easy. Okay. You've done a fantastic job. High five. Thank you. Let's get you a big drink. <laughs> It's day three, and time to find out just how far Michelle has come. The stage is set for Rob's interview from hell. He's drafted in two actors and will be prompting them to make sure they give Michelle a thorough grilling. Tell her you don't think she has what it takes to work in the world of fashion and ask her how she would respond. Just three days ago, she went for the job of her dreams and blew it big time. Have you got any favorite fashion designers? 
Um, can't think of one offhand. Can she really hold it together? Rob's done his best. Michelle is on her own. Hi. Hello. Hello, Michelle. Nice Good to meet to you. See you. Hello, nice to meet Hi. you. Do you have a seat? Thank you. What strengths do you have that would enable you to carry out this job effectively? My main strength is definitely my determination, because I'm, you know, I want to, I'm, I'm so determined in every area of my life, mm -hmm. both personal and in my career. Her body language is so incredibly positive. She's sitting upright and she's using her hands to really emphasise points. So she's projecting that dynamism that she's been bundling up all this time. Why do you want to become a buyer? The thought of walking along the street and seeing people in what you've said will be successful is just amazing and I really want to experience I'm just flabbergasted. She's really communicating her passion. She's smiling, she's emoting, she's being... I'm running out of compliments, to be honest. The gypsy look. Michelle is doing so well that Rob feels it's time to drop in the question that caught her out so badly during her Topshop interview. For the next question, ask her who she admires and why. Two days ago, she replied, um, I can't think of one. And today... Stella McCartney, because when she first got a job in fashion, which was working for Chloe, people said, oh, it's only because of her father. And she's really proved that she's got the ambition and the talent to really succeed in that. Good. This is good. Well, Michelle, you're obviously very nice, but I don't think you've got what it takes. So persuade me. Well, I have a degree in fashion. I've got five years of retail experience. And I'm enthusiastic, eager to learn and very motiva motivated about what I do. So I'd probably ask you what it was that I was lacking, what, I, you know, what, is, what it is you're looking for. Mm. Brilliant. Look at that big smile to finish with. <laughs> How does that feel? Um, oh, I'm well done. Thank you. Oh, well done. Definitely used my hands a little more, and uh, I smiled a little more. And I did use a different tone of voice. And you were just beaming ear to ear all the way through. <laughs> no umming or erring. I mean, the main thing was to improve my confidence, and I've done that, definitely. So how big of an achievement is this? Huge. <laughs> Huge. Well done. Thank oh. you. Oh, you deserve everything. You've worked so hard. Oh, thank you. Five weeks later, Michelle got an interview for a job as a style advisor at Guess Where. This time, she aced the interview and got the job. I can't believe it. I mean, it's my dream job. It really is. Um, and I'm just so, so happy about it. I feel a lot more confident. And now that I've got this job, I know that, you know, I can do this. And, you know, it's not just a dream anymore. And I'm very happy.